Hey, how's it going? Nat here, coming up on Newsbreak. Grammys controversy. Digital art worth $89 million. And we look back on the history of the cassette tape. But before we get started, you know what to do. Hit subscribe. This Sunday's Grammy Awards will see huge performances from Taylor Swift, Dua Lipa and BTS. What it won't see, though, is a performance from The Weeknd. The Canadian pop star has decided to boycott this year's Grammys and all future Grammys over its voting system. Kale explains. In 2020, The Weeknd was everywhere. His song Blinding Lights has just made history, becoming the first song to spend an entire year in Billboard's top 10. But when the Grammy nominations were announced, The Weeknd was nowhere to be seen. According to him, it's all because of the Grammy's secret committees who have the final say on the nominees. How many nominations should we give this record-breaking, chart-topping, critically acclaimed, uber-popular album? How about... None. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it absolutely did not happen like that. But the decision had a lot of people confused. Oh. See, most of the award nominees are decided by thousands of people in the music industry. But for the four big ones, a super secret committee of about 15 people pick and choose who are nominated. Now The Weeknd says he won't allow his label to submit any more music to the awards show. And he's not the first. All these artists have boycotted the Grammys in the past, saying the awards show underrepresents black artists and other minorities. Grammys organisers say they've been working to make the awards show more inclusive and diverse. But for fans of The Weeknd, that hasn't happened fast enough. A digital artwork has sold for $89 million. That's the most expensive ever sold at auction. The artist behind it, known as Beeple, created a new image every day for more than 13 years. And this collage is the result. The market for artworks like these, known as NFTs or non-fungible tokens, has been booming. I can't even, it, it's like a, an unfathomable number, to be quite honest. It's just crazy. The inventor of the cassette tape, Lou Ottens, has died aged 94. He's been remembered as the man who changed the way we all listen to music. So Joe finds out just how important this little invention really is. For a long time, records were the best and only way most people listen to recorded music. But there was a problem. Even the smallest record players weren't particularly portable. Can you turn that thing off? And that's where Lou Oten's invention comes in. In 1963, while working at electronics company Philips, he came up with this, the cassette. Sounds could be recorded and played back onto a magnetic tape that could fit almost anywhere. And it wasn't just useful for music. I'll do just that. In the decades since, 100 billion cassette tapes have been sold. And while technology improved and adapted and gave us some more practical options, the humble cassette tape has somehow stuck with us. For this next segment, I'm going to have to downsize. Because these next stories are on a roll. Like me. Speaking of things that roll, we're heading to a bowling alley. This impressive drone flight has gone bananas online. It's all one shot with no edits, no CGI, just incredibly skilled piloting and great timing from the actors. Ken, you know him, Barbie's Ken. He's just turned 60. The doll first hit shelves back in 1961 and while he's changed a lot over the years to celebrate the milestone, he's been given a retro makeover, a re-release of the original Ken look. There's no stopping these guys. Check out Rey Mysterio's doppelganger and his entourage of misfits here, making sure the people at this market in Mexico wear their face masks. 
I'm really not sure if all this is very COVID safe though. But one thing's for sure, they are on a roll. All right, that's all from us today. If you know anyone who knows how to turn me back to regular size, let me know.